think I'm uh, probably quite a, a normal Finn in that way that uh, uh, we, we've known about Tama Finland our whole lives and uh, I mean the imagery and, uh, and uh, all the pictures and, uh, and the, the legacy of him but still uh, there's, uh, there's not much known about uh, the artist behind Tama Finland, behind the, uh, the nickname or, or, or the artistical name so uh, I knew quite uh, little about him but when I got the the phone call for the casting, I started to, to as people do, just to Google it and, uh, and uh, to read more about him. I went to the library to get some books books about him. And uh, so uh, I think nowadays people know much more about the artist behind it. But there's still the big difference with, with, with this big, uh, big name. But uh, <coughs> Tom of Finland today is uh, it's almost a brand. And, uh, the first question I got from my friends when they, they heard I'm going to play Tom of Finland, they were like, how are you going to get the muscles? <laughs> because everybody thinks he's the, the iconic leather character who's called Kake, and uh, with this, uh, uh, this hyper, hyper masculine and really sporty guys, and uh, I'm more of the lazy one. So, so um, the, the only good thing is that so was Togo Lux, and he was quite a normal Finnish guy. So. So, uh, but his impact in, in, in Finland today is, is much bigger. as. Uh, this movie is part of the 100th centennial, like the 100th uh, year of independence in Finland. And uh, our culture is quite uh, conservative in, in some ways, that uh, we tend to just uh, idolize war, because uh, that we had in the, in the Second World War, we, we sort of got liberated from, from the... Uh, we, got, I mean, we, were, we were a small country up north and got uh, big borders with the uh, Soviet Union or Russia. So uh, the war has been sort of the big thing, and uh, this uh, quite pathetic macho culture, like uh, uh, a bit scared and a bit uh, narrow-sighted and narrow-minded. But uh, 2011, the, the postal office, uh, the, the sort of the government, uh, made the stamp of Tom of Finland that uh, sold out and blew everybody. Like, wow, what's happening? So. Uh, uh, I think that was the first step of, uh, or a big step of Tom of Finland getting recognized also in, uh, in Finland. And today, I hope that people are proud of him. And I think most people are. And I mean, people sleep with Tom of Finland sheets. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, his, uh, his, one of his last wishes before he died was that uh, Finland would recognize him. So I think we're, we're on a good way now. And anywhere he is, I think he's, he's happy. So Tokos or, or Tom's uh, attitude to politics was uh, was quite. Uh, I didn't think he, he saw himself as a revolutionary artist. And uh, there's a really nice interview on YouTube uh, from 19. I think it's from 1984 when he speaks to art students in, in uh, or 1986. Well, whatever. So a long time ago, and uh, he speaks to. It's called Cal Arts, and uh, then he. He gets the he gets a question about his uh, political influence, and he says that uh, that maybe I was political, but uh, I, uh, or, but I didn't want to sort of uh, uh, say it out loud. And I, I think um, he started just like he said himself, just uh, drawing dirty little pictures for himself, and uh, he sort of got uh, aroused and, and got excited by him, uh, by the pictures himself, and. Uh, he was really like humble with, with his art, and if, if somebody he saw his picture and said, "Oh, wow, that's lovely," he he used to say, "Do you want it?" And he gave it away. I mean, there's about 5,000 pictures in the world, and now now they retrieve uh, 3,500. And he's got uh, he got I mean stolen and uh, everything. So for him, it because it was illegal. So I think that's it's like. Um, it's like selling drugs. You can't go to the police and say you got bad drugs. I mean, <laughs> I got, I got. Uh, so uh, I think that was the same, same with it. And uh, and uh, maybe he didn't realize he was doing a revolution until until he got to LA or until he he started to travel uh, more abroad and uh, got into the different communities around the world. There's a story when when the first time he he came to LA, uh, Dirk Denner, who's the president of the Tamil Film Foundation. Took him out to a bar. Uh, I think it's the, the Eagle called actually. It's still there. The oldest, uh, one of the oldest gay bars in uh, in, uh, in LA. And uh, then there's this. Uh, he was in his fifties uh, or sixties then. So an old man, just ordinary. And when Dirk started to tell the 
the guys in the bar that this is Tom Finland. The, the, the line to him just grew and grew with these stories of uh, people growing up, uh, uh, let's say in Texas or in small small cities, uh, especially in the in the east, because in the west the west coast was more liberated than. And I think that's all around the world, uh, probably in uh, Italy, probably in France, in some where, where you can't sort of it's everybody knows everybody, so so the social pressure is really hard. But I think when he got to hear these stories one after another, you saved my life, you showed me that I'm not alone, you showed me that I can feel, I have the right to feel these feelings, and you showed me the most beautiful thing on earth. So. I don't think he realized that before, so uh, that, that's probably why he, he wasn't sort of an active activist. Uh, just the AIDS movement made him sort of more, more uh, active in, the, in a political way. Well, uh, 2017 has changed uh, a lot in the whole world. I mean, uh, we got these two crazy guys running the biggest, uh, biggest country, so suddenly we have this reality TV host uh, running USA and this dictator running running Russia and uh, uh, so uh, the world has changed a lot uh, I think uh, when uh, when the author and director started to work on this movie five years ago it wasn't an uh, it wasn't an agenda movie it wasn't uh, and it's still not it's still a biopic about an artist but suddenly the agenda pops out of it and uh, I don't think country borders are, are the the ones who define uh, if you're conservative or not. Uh, it's probably the same all around the world, that it's the uh, metropolitan areas, metropolitan areas that are more liberated because uh, people tend to move there to, to be anonymous and, uh, and you can be whatever you want to in a, in a big city. So I think uh, in Finland uh, we have these three, four bigger cities and uh, they are quite liberal uh, in, um, in, in, uh, to, to some to almost any extent. But when you just go 100 kilometers up north or, or east or wherever, uh, in rural, rural areas, it's, uh, it's a bit more conservative. I don't think people are that much different, but it's the society and, uh, and uh, sort of uh, the frames are a bit smaller. And uh, you try to fit into something that's, uh, that's more acceptable. But I don't know where we're going, but still I feel that uh, Europe has, uh, through, since, since the recession, uh, the, the economical recession in, uh, that hit uh, a lot of countries really hard, uh, that came from, uh, from uh, the US and in 2008 when Iceland went totally bankrupt and uh, I mean you had some problems here in Italy too and uh, Greece and everything and uh, economical situations always, um, it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good ground for growing nationalistic movements. Uh, and uh, now the economy is starting to show a bit of, uh, at least in Finland and probably around Europe, uh, it's going more to the plus side. And uh, then you can't blame others. It's always the, the, the old political way of uh, trying to divide people into us and them. And uh, minorities are, uh, are always the first ones to blame. And uh, people get, when they get scared of, of their own situation, they tend to find a problem uh, that is outside themselves. And then it always gets hard for minorities. And the right-wing movements around Europe, I think uh, we just had a had a, a one of the big uh, right-wing right parties just split up in in, in Finland. We had a, a crisis for three days. Uh, it was a government party, and uh, suddenly it split up. And uh, the sort of uh, more of a right-wing racist movement they, they got quite alone. And we've seen some good tendencies uh, of this all around Europe. And uh, I mean, with with Britain's. Uh, Britain's uh, conservatives and these uh, closing the borders movements, I think they are losing. So, and I'm a, I'm an optimist. So, uh, as uh, you have the great, great Italian poet Giovanotti said, "Il penso positivo." <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I think uh, we're going for better times. That's the only way to live. I mean, we can't, we can't be negative. Of course, you have to do things, but but you can't, uh, you can't just be too negative because then nothing changes.